okay? Okay, excellent. Right, um, welcome everybody to this uh, regulatory meeting. Uh, it's our first regu for virtual regulatory meeting. Um, there are, as there are a number of us to, today, I'd like to introduce a few housekeeping rules for using the meetings with teams. First, this is a normal committee meeting. It just happens that we are being held remotely with a number of our members in different areas. It will be recorded in the same way and put onto YouTube. Would members please uh, ensure that their microphones are muted and the video is turned off when not speaking to avoid distracting noises. Uh, please remember to unmute yourself when it comes to that time when you want to speak. Meeting basics. I am chairing the meeting today, Mark Cargill. Helen Barnsley is assisting from Democratic Services. Uh, we have Ian from Legal. Uh, case officers will be, replay, uh, will be uh, presenting. That's Sally, I think, just Sally. And then we have obviously other support from Democratic Services and IT as appropriate. So hopefully we'll have no no major issues in that particular context. Right. If you uh, there's a couple of things which we were discussing prior to this meeting, which is things like, for example, conditions. If you wish to raise a condition, then please use the raise hand function. If you don't have that, then use the chat function. The chat function is uh, open to all members of the public as well. Then please say what your condition is. The reason being it needs to be verbalized. We will then be looking at the planning officer and to see if that is acceptable as a condition that can be enforced. Uh, amendments. Similarly, if you wish to make an amendment to a proposal, then raise the hand, say the amendment out loud. And then we're going to ask that you type that amendment out so that the officer can look at that and apply it appropriately. Please remember that, as before, any proposer and seconder must accept that um, amendment. So again, we'll be discussing those. Hopefully that will be enable the meeting to run smoothly. Uh, right, before we start, uh, welcome to Neil, who's um, on our team now, on the regulatory. Now, the first bit is a very sad bit of news, as a, a number of you are aware, I'm sure. Our previous chair of regulatory, Bill Olner, sadly passed away uh, the other week. Um, I'm going to now ask members for a one minute silence, please, in memory of Bill. So one minute, please. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I'd just like to say a few words and I'll obviously open it up for other members who probably knew Bill far better than I did. But I'd just like to say that I've known Bill now um, reasonably well since we started. I was vice chairing for him on regulatory and I found him to be an absolutely marvellous, lovely person, uh, a, a joy to work with. He was just a, a nice, gentle per person but with an amazing knowledge and grasp of the situation, shall we say. Uh, he gave me some really good advice. I learned an awful lot from him. And you think, is it, is it, when as long in the tooth as me, you're thinking, uh, well, why should I learn? But I learned a lot from Bill. And I found him to be a, a very enjoyable person to work with. Uh, we were on the slightly different side of the, uh, the fences, so to speak, but that didn't make any difference at all. We got on extremely well, and I think that we ended up with what I class as a very good regulatory committee and uh, very well chaired by Bill. Right. Uh, are there any other members that would like to say a few words about Bill, please? If you'd like to unmute.
Helen, we got anybody? Uh, Jill. Sorry, yes, just turning all the technology on. Um, Bill was lovely. He was he was great. You could talk to him about he he could talk forever about planning. Um, he knew the history of pretty much every site in all of Warwickshire. It seemed. Um, <laughs> Any time any application came up, you'd, you'd get a very long history about he remembered what it had been previously or 20 years ago. And a, and a huge amount of knowledge that unfortunately now been lost, along with a really nice, friendly, decent person. You know, he didn't care what party everybody was part of. He just wanted to know about you as a person. He was great for a chat and you just have a coffee beforehand or afterwards. And yeah, it's like, you know, in this day of sort of cutthroat politics, sometimes it's, it's nice to have people that kind of just chilled out about it and were really nice and friendly and welcoming to everybody. I disagree. Um, John? Yes. Uh, thank you, Chairman. I just wanted to say I first met Bill when I was 27. Uh, he was the mayor of Nuneaton and Bedeth, and I was the mayor of Kenilworth, and I found him charming then. As I've always found, I've kept in touch with him over the years when I wasn't on the council and he really is was a special guy. And uh, I think it's a great loss to the council. It's also a great loss to all, all the people he represented. He was he was a great guy. He represented people honestly and fairly. And actually, I think he was respected by everybody, regardless of politics. Well, I won't disagree with that, John. I think he was well respected. And it's almost like you lost a friend. Um, I think that's the thing there. Would anyone else like to contribute? Okay, right. Well, the other news I've got to mention to everybody. Oh, I just say um, this is this is nice as well. Uh, we've also had a number of the officers who would, would like to say a few words as well about it, and things like a thank you for the guidance and gentle handling of diplomacy during tricky situations. It's always a pleasure to work with him from the planning officers. Uh, Democratic services, it's always a pleasure to work with Councillor Olner from regulatory overview and scrutiny work and other meetings. He will be most, most missed. So again, I think that's reflective of the, of the guy. Super chap. OK, uh, right. And another bit of news, I'd also like to mention that Ian Grace will be retiring in a couple of weeks time. I was kind of hoping you might come to our last meeting, but there you go. He, he won't be able to make it, I'm afraid. I would just like to say again, thank you very much to Ian for all his good advice. Uh, I've never heard anyone explain things in such detail in a planning meeting, both the good and the bad. But whatever it was, you had no illusions of what the application was all about. You knew it down to the last detail. So again, um, I just had to say to Ian, Thank you very much indeed for all of your sound advice over the years and your hard work for this authority. Um, I do hope you're you're well and you'll get a, a lovely retirement and enjoy whatever you're going to do. Fishing, golf, I don't know. Uh, I just hope he has a lovely retirement and uh, and take care of yourself. OK, Helen, I think we're going to bring in the external attendees now. I think they are all, they've all been they're all in excellent there's no one waiting at the moment so we'll um, keep an eye on it thank you very much then right meeting proper then um apologies i haven't received any okay then members uh um pecuniary and non-pecuniary interests uh if you have any interest would you like to raise them now please uh, Councillor Simpson Vince. Thank you. Um, yeah, agenda item for um, the highways depot in rugby on the basis of rugby borough councillor portfolio holder for growth and investment. Okay, thank you very much. Anything else on that? Okay, then moving on. Minutes of the previous meeting. Uh, I'm going to ask. Are there any objections to the minutes? Otherwise, we'll take them as read. Neil, no. Councillor Dervix would like to speak. Carry on. Well, 
Right. Thank you. It was uh, really about pecuniary uh, interests. Um, I am a member of the planning board at North Warwickshire Borough Council also. Um, that shouldn't impact on any of the decisions that we have to take today, but it's worth flagging it up just in case. <laughs> No, thank you. And I've just been advised that uh, Councillor uh, Simpson bins no, it's not a problem. Either it doesn't preclude you from voting on this particular issue. OK, thank you. Thank you. Right. Well, delegated decisions. Are members happy with the delegated decisions that have been put we in? We need to go back and just clarify on the minutes of the previous meeting. Sorry, clarify. I don't oh, think we finished. OK. Are there any objections to the um, the minutes? No. Okay. We'll move on then. Delegated decisions. Are there any comments that members wish to make on those? If not, we'll take that as read. And then we'll move on to our first planning application. This is planning application WDC slash 20CC001, provision of one temporary classroom for educational use while second phase of Heathcote School is completed. And I'd like to ask Sally to do the presentation, please. Good morning. Thank you, Chair. Um, if I can just share my screen, I can get my uh, committee presentation up. If you just bear with me, if I can double check, I get the right one. Of course. Um, OK, and start the slideshow. OK, I'm hoping you can see the single screen. We can, yeah. OK, good, thank you. Uh, just my... um, as Chair said, the application is for the provision of a single temporary classroom at Heathcote School. The Heathcote School is a two-form entry school. You can see the, the site here um, ringed in red. The classroom is needed for um, the accommodation of a year group starting in September um, while building works are being carried out at the school. The primary school was approved in 2016 and was approved as a two-phase development. The first phase was completed and opened in 2017. And the second phase um, is currently under construction. As I say, the first phase opened in 2017. This is a photo from Google Earth just before it opened and the site was surrounded by construction um, of the housing estate um, around about In September 2019, the reception, um, there were two forms of reception opened. The school opened initially as a one form entry and this last intake was phased to a two form entry. At that point, the eight classrooms of the first phase of development um, are now full, which has triggered the need for the phase two development um, the extension to the to the north of the school to be constructed. Um, if I can just show you the these two element, um, the additional eight classrooms and the application site itself is to site the temporary classroom in this location. Construction work, as I say, has started on that phase two development. There were delays and that has what's generated the need for the temporary classroom. And the delays have been made significantly worse by the uh, COVID-19 lockdown. I understand that uh, construction works on the phase two have now restarted, but obviously due to social distancing, they may take longer than originally um, planned. The site of the temporary classroom is on the future car park area for the phase two development. The first phase of the school 
created uh, car parking in this area and there's a, an extension to provide some additional spaces in this area and that's the site for the temporary classroom. During the time that the temporary classroom will be in position, a fence will be erected between the classroom and the staff car park with gated access to ensure safety of children moving around the site. <coughs> The classroom itself is a 10 by 10 temporary classroom designed to accommodate the 30 additional pupils who are likely to be from year four. The classroom has a stepped entrance, which while not ideal, um, is acceptable as a, as a temporary um, for a temporary period. Facilities for pupils or staff with disabilities would need to be made in the in the main school building. This is the site area itself at present. The classroom will be located in this position. It's currently an area of grasscrete and chippings. It has been available for parking already. Um, before the temporary classroom is to be installed, the intention is to put a tarmac surface on that area so that when the temporary classroom is removed, um, it's available immediately for parking. A previously approved plan once the uh, phase two development is is completed. When the temporary classroom has been removed, the final wearing course of the tarmac will be will be laid, but that will be at some point when it's safe to do so, probably during the school summer holidays. I visited the school on the 11th of March. It was prior to the lockdown and. This was at 10 o'clock in the morning on a standard day and there were spaces available in the in the uh, staff car park. Um, there's a sufficient space for staff um, during the time that the additional classroom is is on that classroom uh, on the car park location. Um, this is the access gates into that classroom into the uh, car park area. There are a couple of bike stores on site and they've been provided adequately for the both phases of the school development. The school site is surrounded by security fencing. This is, uh, I'm actually stood on the site of the temporary classroom here looking towards the houses in Vickers Way to the south. There's a distance of 27 metres between the houses and the site itself of, of the temporary classroom. And I received no comments from, from the neighbours that I hand delivered to there. And there's no overlooking or overshadowing. The, uh, there are no windows on the side elevation of the classroom facing towards those properties. So the rear of the temporary classroom is the playing field. There would be a door on the rear of the classroom opening out onto the playing field for use in emergencies. So again, the, the staff car park area to the front of the school site. And the main entrance, there are two disabled car parking spaces and there are electric charging points um, for five vehicles in the, in the school um, car park. This is looking along the front of the, the school site um, towards the application site. And this is the access gate to the main entrance leading into the car park. When I was out on site, there was a pedestrian access point um, under construction. This is to allow pupils um, access from Garrett Drive to the east of the school um, to come onto the school site it's to discourage the use of Vickers Way to the south as the drop off point for, for pupils into the school. Again, this is looking towards the west, um, that, that um, path under construction, and that will be the access point for pupils. This is the um, north side of the building and the phase two uh, building works under construction. As I say, they were stopped for a while during the lockdown, but they have commenced again. 
the phase two development will provide an additional eight classrooms in this location. This is the view along Vickers Way looking towards the application site. So the temporary classroom will be in this location down here. The, uh, the classroom will be seen in the street scene with the backdrop against the backdrop of the existing school buildings. Um, the buildings considered to be acceptable in this location, subject to conditions that uh, the building is removed within 12 months of the installation or once the phase two works have been completed, whichever is the sooner, and for the car park to be laid out um, to provide that car parking for the phase two development. Um, I understand that, as I say, the uh, construction works are being carried out again and it's estimated that the temporary classroom could be installed. They can't order it until they have a planning consent, but it's anticipated to be June or July this year for the installation. So it would be for a year once that installation is, is completed. So my recommendation is approval. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much indeed. Uh, right, members, first of all, are there any technical questions you wish to ask Sally? But also, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, Sally, we have got the applicants with us as well, if there are any issues or questions you yes, would like to raise do. of them. So may I ask that you ask technical questions first to Sally, and then we, if there are any of the applicants, you can do so. But I'd just like to reiterate, Kate, uh, sorry, I'm just looking at Kate's hand up, uh, Sally, that um, it's for 12 months from the time that it's installed, Exactly. And then also there's no issues regards parking uh, provision on site, even with this classroom. That's correct. There's sufficient parking on site. Um, it, it's designed to have this car park when the phase two development is completed. So the eight classrooms, as you saw from my photos, there's sufficient for this one additional classroom for the present time for the year. And at that point, the school has been gradually um, expanded. So there'll right. be an additional classroom in use come the following September. Excellent. Thank you very much. Kate, would you like to ask a question? Uh, yes. Um, so with the delay in um, in building works uh, on phase two, uh, yeah. how long is that estimated to be completed by? Do, do you have any idea? I, I don't, I'm afraid. That might be a question actually for the applicant. As I say, I have heard today that work has commenced again on site. I would imagine the programme will take longer than initially anticipated because of social distancing, but we do have the applicants here to ask that question. Can we ask the applicants, please? Uh, hello, Andrew Hardcastle from Lungfish Architects, the, the applicant. Um, as I understand, um, I believe that the scheme should be completed uh, on or about the October half term. However, that it is a moving feast, um, so that, that is the best that I can give you at the current time. That may change. Sorry, just to qualify, October 2021? Uh, October this year. Oh, this year. Okay. So the, the phase two complete. Yeah. Okay. All right. Okay. Sorry. As I, just... I understand it now, that may it may roll further on towards the Christmas time. Um, but that's that's my understanding presently. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, any others who would wish, wish to ask any Dervic questions? Dervic just asked to speak. Carry on, please. I, I haven't picked that one up. Oh, yes. Councillor Dervic. Thank you, Chair. Um, I think the question I was going to ask has partially been uh, answered already. Um, it's, we've been told that the work has started again and that um, this temporary classroom should probably go in in June and July. What I was going to uh, ask was, if was there any reason why the um, removal of it could not be done during the summer holidays of uh, 20, uh, you know, in, in 2021. Um, 
it seems to me that the sensible thing to do to minimise the disruption to pupils would be to link its removal with either the end of the school year or certainly with a school holiday. Um, and it, it, I, I think that has probably been covered. Um, what I wouldn't want to see is that um, there was a big upheaval for all these children just before the end of the school year or during term time just to get through the planning. Um, but I think that has probably been answered already. So can I just clarify, do you have a question then? Uh, that was going to be my question, was, was, was there any reason why the uh, removal date couldn't be during the summer holidays next year, the final removal date, so that um, you know, you're not having to remove it during school time because the work has, has continued longer than expected? Um, We've since heard that the uh, projected finish time is actually going to be before Christmas. So that actually takes away the, the need to, uh, to, to, to change that planning condition to, to accommodate that. Yeah. Um, so I apologise for the, um, the, the time that this has, has taken in putting that, that no uh, question. That's fine. Thank you very much indeed. Good point, sir. Good points. OK, uh, are there any other questions that need to be raised either of Sally or alternatively of the applicants? If not, then, members, um, I would like to go into debate on this one, please. Councillor Cook. Councillor Cook. And Councillor Parry. Yes, Chairman. Um, first, I'd like to congratulate Sally on her presentation because it was very thorough and I thought the pictures were particularly good. I must say you know, that that particular school is not well known to me and I'm, I was very interested to see it. Um, having read the report thoroughly, I think that the, the key point, in fact, all the all the pl main planning issues have been covered by Sally. Um, so. I do think uh, I, I did know the only sort of slightly negative thing and Sally did refer to it was the fact that the temporary building wouldn't necessarily be, be easily accessible to certain groups of people with, with, with certain needs. But other than that, the whole thing complies. Um, I will just say to you, I know that you're not looking for a resolution at the moment, but I would say to you, um, looking at all the rules and regulations, I don't see that there's any planning reason we could object to this. So uh, that's a, so. when you're looking for a proposal, come back to me. Thank you very much indeed, Councillor Cook. Uh, Councillor Parry. Thank you, Chair. Um, I thought this was an excellent, re uh, excellent report. Um, I am familiar with the site because it's actually not too far from, um, it, it's an adjacent um, division to mine. Um, and I think particularly with with all the uh, necessity for social distancing, the addition of a, d a temporary classroom is totally vital. Um, you know, and I'm I'm totally in support of it, and would certainly recommend um, a proposal uh, to go with the officer's recommendation. But, Thank you. Uh, so I have a proposal. Are there any other people who would like to discuss and debate on this one? No. Well, in that case, then, I do have a proposer. Councillor Cook, would you be happy to uh, second this? Certainly will do, Chairman. Right. Helen, um, I think we can move to the vote now. All okay. those in favour? Right. Now, I'll, leave, I'll let you do this bit now, the complicated bit. Hi. So all, all I'm going to do, just for clarification just making sure this is as clear as possible is just go through everyone's name one by one and ask how you're going to vote for this application so the first is the chair councillor cargill four councillor cook four councillor dervix four councillor gifford four Councillor Parry for Councillor Phillips. I'm not sure. Yes. Okay. Councillor Riley. Four, thank you. Councillor Rickards. Four. 
Councillor Rolfe? Four. Councillor Simpson Vince? I know she's having Four. some light. Four. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Warwick? Four. And Councillor Williams? Support. Can you unmute <laughs> Councillor Williams? I did lip read. <laughs> Four. Thumbs up? Thumbs up. <laughs> okay, I don't think I've missed anybody. That's excellent. So members, um, I'd just like to say that um, we uh, agreed planning application WDC 20CC001, uh, we all agreed has been passed. Thank you very much indeed. That wasn't too painful. Right, our next application then. If members could now go back to mute and video off, I'd appreciate it. Thank you. The next application then again is Sally, which is the proposed use of land at Payne's Lane Rugby for WC Highways Depot, um, a land and chipping store. Over to Sally for a presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Chair. Can I just double check that you can see the, the presentation and the single screen? The sc single yes, screen. yes, I can. Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. OK, the application is for land at Payne's Lane for use as a highways depot. Um, this would be a 24 hour operation, three sun, 365 days a year, and it would be for winter service and emergency attendance at highway incidents. The site is located um, to the west of the junction of Lawford Road and Rugby Western Relief Road and south of the Semex cement plant. The proposal is for the erection of um, a gritter store, which, um, sorry, gritter vehicle store, which if I, sorry, this building here, um, there's a salt dome proposed and also an office building and some parking areas and storage to the side. Uh, this is the image from, from Google showing the location to the south of the Semex plant. Um, as I say, there would be parking to, to the side here and also in front of the office building. There are storage bays proposed to each side and also a wash facility for the gritter vehicles. The office building itself um, would be 24 metres by 9 metres in, in size, a single storey building. This would be a brick construction just under 4 metres in height. Um, the rear elevation is, is this one here with high level windows, which would be facing out um, towards the Rugby Relief Road. The salt dome is uh, a structure 21 metres in diameter and 10 metres in height. We would have a concrete wall construction up to three metres in height with um, a green felt roof over. There's a single entrance um, to the building um, without a door and this would face out onto the courtyard area. If I can just go back to show you this, the uh, floor plan, all the buildings open out onto the yard area. So they have rear elevations facing out outwards onto the site. So the activities on site are contained in that yard area. Um, this is the um, Gritter vehicle um, store building. It, it's, uh, sorry. This is 37 metres in diameter by um, by 12 metres and would house nine vehicles. The building would be six metres in height approximately um, to accommodate those vehicles and would be constructed of a composite metal structure coloured coloured green. If I take you through my site photos, this is the access into the site from Payne's Lane. This uh, 
access point is through the gates here would be widened to accommodate HGV access to swing round from, from Payne's Lane into here. There's a willow tree here at this point which would be removed and sorry, this is the tree to be removed. Bear with me. Um, there would be a footpath coming in here constructed to the side. I'm now stood inside the site looking back out towards that access point and this is the willow tree to be removed. I've then taken photos looking from left to right sort of 360 around the site so if I, I take you on that sort of visual tour around. So this is looking um, this is looking on the western boundary and you can see the commercial property premises on the other side of, of Payne's, Payne's Lane. This is looking towards, again looking west, commercial premises and also the Semex um, cement site on uh, to the north. This area of the site would be the site of the car parking. Again, swinging, looking further to my right, this is now looking towards the access point. This is Payne's Lane access onto Lawford Road. So you can see that lorry is actually sat at the T-junction trying to exit onto Lawford Road. And this is the plant of the, uh, the cement works. The Gritter store build, um, vehicle building would be in this location along the northern boundary. Again, looking further to my right, this would be the site of the Gritter store. This is looking towards the northeastern side of the site and would be the location of the salt dome in this location. As I say, the salt dome would be 10 metres in height. In the distance here, you can see the closest residential properties. These are four storey flats. They're about 140, uh, sorry, 170 metres um, away from the application site itself. This is looking along the eastern boundary of the site towards the Western Relief Road. And you can see the um, landscaping strip here. The site is surrounded by two metre high palisade fencing, which is uh, marks the boundary of the site. And beyond that is a landscape strip, approximately on that eastern boundary, about six metres in depth. This uh, is looking into the um, next corner of the site. This would be the location of the office building and just to the side of that would be the vehicle wash gantry. So it's a structure to, to jet wash the vehicles from. This is looking southwards um, at the, the southern boundary of the site and just beyond that is the Seven Trent pumping station is the neighbouring um, premises. And now I'm looking back towards the access into, into the site. So again, if I locate that, I think is the willow tree to be removed. The site itself is gently sloping from south towards the north, rising in height slightly northwards. The access itself is more steeply sloping. So you can see that the ground levels here rise just gently sort of northwards. The existing uh, site is surfaced, um, hard surfaced. It was used as the constructor's um, depot for the construction of the Rugby Relief Road um, back in 2010. I think the Relief Road opened in 2010, so it was prior to that point. I think this concrete structure here is part of, sorry, is part of the foundations of the uh, the office building, the temporary office building that was erected for those construction works. The site has more recently been used for the storage of um, road chippings as uh, uh, for highway use. 
The surface, as I say, is largely hard surfaced at present. The uh, entire surface would be of the central courtyard area would be tarmacked and reinforced concrete, a mixture um, suitable for use by the highway um, depot, depot vehicles. That would include the 26 tonne gritter lorries and the largest vehicle visiting the site would be a 44 tonne HGV delivering salt supplies in September. Here you can see that there are um, sort of mounds remaining of, of um, road chippings on the site and this is the boundary fence in the palisade fencing. I have recommended a condition for um, tree protection fencing to be erected um, during construction as, as the uh, boundary fence may not be adequate or sufficient for, for that. So this is looking um, along that wet, sorry, along the eastern boundary of the site and you can see the uh, landscape trees at this point. Vegetation on the site is largely rough scrub and buddleia um, plants self-seeded which would be removed. There is a proposal, um, no proposal for a landscape scheme, but there's a, a condition recommended for the installation of um, a number of bird boxes, either on the site itself attached to buildings on the site or into the immediately surrounding area. This is a view from the site, from the access gates down towards Payne's Lane. You can see the, the levels drop away at this point. The neighbouring premises is the uh, Seven Trent uh, pumping station. And this is looking back towards the, uh, you can see the trees on the boundary there of the site itself. Um, I'm now stood at the T-junction of the access point with Payne's Lane, looking left um, and you can just see at this point, the tarmac here leads to, there's a public footpath that leads at this point that links Payne's Lane with the relief road. Um, there's a note requiring that construction work should not hinder access on, on that footpath. Um, I don't have a condition for that, but it's far enough away not to be impacted um, or to need the condition, I think. This is a photo of the uh, that public footpath from the Western Relief Road looking back towards the, the application site. Uh, these are the uh, commercial premises on the opposite side of Payne's Lane, opposite the access. And now I'm looking right from the access point up towards the junction with uh, Lawford Road at the end. This is the Payne's Lane Junction with Lawford Road. There were no objections from highways. They did initially raise some concern about the impact on this junction, um, but on submission of further information on traffic movements, um, there, was, there was no objection. The point was clarified that it would not have an adverse impact on this, on this junction. This is looking along Lawford Road um, eastwards towards the junction of the Relief Road with Lawford Road. And you can see um, on my right is the uh, the landscaping area that surrounds the site to screen um, from beyond the site. This is looking west back towards the Paint Lane Junction. Um, I'm now looking stood on the far side of the Western Relief Road, looking back towards the site. This is the northern corner of the site and the salt dome would be in this location here. Um, rugby planners didn't raise an attention to the uh, application, but they did make a comment that they were concerned that if there wasn't landscaping on the site, more landscaping should be um, planted to screen the, the salt dome because of the height of the structure. I haven't made that recommendation actually. The planting here is, is quite young still um, and is still maturing and I think will in time 
adequately screen the structure. I think if we impose more landscaping in this location, we could actually damage the existing planting. This is again stood on the far side of the Western Relief Road, looking back towards the site um, and the office building will be coming in this location here. And salt dome would come in this location and there would be the gantry for the vehicle wash at this point. Um, Rugby Borough Council Environmental Health Officer has recommended a condition for the enclosure of part of that structure or to ensure that there's not water discharged um, from the wash facility towards the road or beyond the site. Uh, this is a photo showing on that northern boundary the, the landscaping that's there at present. And a slightly more closer, they're fairly young trees at present, um, but they're healthy and are growing and will, will screen the site um, adequately in time. I think these, the, the landscaping was planted in the last 10 years, so it's, it's still quite young um, when the uh, relief road was completed. Uh, Rugby Borough Council, in addition to the condition recommended for the uh, screening of the um, of the gantry wash facility, have recommended a condition for um, air source heat pump noise. Um, the Environment Agency raised no objection to this um, application, but they did suggest a couple of conditions. Firstly, relating to contamination, if any potential contamination is found during construction, then that would need to be dealt with. Um, they required a condition for that and also a condition for foul and surface water drainage to prevent any uh, pollution of um, both the Sobrook and the underlying aquifer. Um, my recommendation is approval subject to the recommended conditions on this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you very much, Dee. So again, very thorough. Um, OK, I, I see it's a fairly derelict site. Um, now, then, a couple of questions. First of all, the colour of the dome, it is quite high for yes. obvious reasons because of physically getting the lorries in there. The colour of the dome, I assume, is to try and sort of merge into the background a little bit. Is that correct? Uh, yes, it is. Yes. OK, then. Um, right. You picked up my other points on landscaping and salt infusion um, infiltration, I should say, which was obviously the main concern on a site like this. Again, those have been picked up on your condition, so I'm, I'm, I'm not unhappy in those particular contexts. Right. Uh, Councillor Simpson Vince. Thank you, Chair. Um, Sally, my questions are just around the parking. Um, obviously, there's a bit of um, no definitive number of car parking spaces that are required. The closest they could get was 17. Do we feel 11 is going to be enough? I mean, I get that it's a 24 hour site, so you have people there all the time. But Payne's Lane, I know sometimes, certainly in the evenings, can be quite a nightmare to park down. Right. Um, and are any of those 11 car park spaces going to have electric charging points? Um, yes, there are two charging points proposed. Um, so yes, there is some provision for that. One disabled space. There are 11 spaces proposed. Um, this is a sui generis use. So where if it was a B8 um, storage facility, it would require 17. Um, because we can look at it as a sui generis use, um, the applicant made it clear that that the staff that are arriving at this site, for example, for the uh, driving the gritter lorries um, would arrive by minibus. Um, they're coming in elsewhere. So the, the requirement for um, parking is not, um, it, it's adequate to the 11 spaces. Um, it's a large yard area, and I think there will be some flexibility in terms of additional parking. Um, and movement of vehicles within the site. Thank you very much. Um, are there any other questions? And not forgetting that we do have the applicants with us as well. So if there are any questions you would like to raise, please do so. No? Anyone else putting their hands up? In which case, I'd like to go into debate then, please. 
Councillor Simpson Vince. <laughs> Sorry, I'm, I'm ticking all the boxes. Um, yeah, do you know, this site is one that you drive past it and that whole Payne's Lane area um, can look a little bit scruffy around the edges, shall we say. Um, and this does look at the moment when you drive past it like a derelict site. So actually getting something, a, a proper use for that site that will have buildings and look like it's got some activity is actually going to be quite a big benefit for that particular area. Um, so I'm fully supportive of this and I'm happy to move for approval when we get to that point. Thank you. I have that. Council Warwick. Oh, can I just interrupt before you count in Council Warwick? Council, uh, sorry, Scott, did you want to say something? Can imagine speaking? Yes, Chair, thank you. Um, sorry, it was just a quick note to say that um, one of the positive things for highways with this depot okay, when, it, when and if it uh, happens is that uh, we would be able to suspend our gritting activities coming out of the Dunchurch depot. Um, and, and the Dunchurch depot is not a great location for gritting activities because it's in a in a uh, in a housing area. So, um, you know, the, the middle of the night runs disturbs people in that in that locality, whereas um, the Payne's Lane will be a much better operation place for um, for our, our gritting activities. That was all. Thank you. No, thank you for that. It's a good comment and uh, appreciate that one. Councillor Warwick. Thank you, Chair. Basically, just to uh, agree with Joe's comments, it will tidy the area up. It's a site that something needs doing with, and it's uh, a use that uh, the site seems very, very suitable for. So uh, when you come to debate, if you're calling Jill back to propose this, uh, I'm quite happy to, to, to sort of second this when it comes up, but very, very suitable and a good use and, and a good plan for it. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Are there any other people who would like to comment? In which case, um, I will go to the vote. I have a proposer and I have a seconder. Helen, would you like to uh, to go through the process, please? Yep, we'll just do exactly the same as last time. So, Chair? For? Councillor Cook? For? Councillor Dervix? For? Councillor Gifford. For. Councillor Parry. For. Councillor Phillips. She's not here. Oh. Uh, Councillor Riley. For, thank you. Councillor Rickards. For. Councillor Rolfe. Four, and if I may just say, I need to go in about three minutes before. Thank, okay. thank you, Kate. Thank you. Appreciate thank that. you. Councillor Simpson Vince. Four. Councillor Warwick. Four. And Councillor Chris Williams. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that's it. That's unanimous. Thank you, members. Uh, Planning application for the proposed use of land at Payne's Lane Rugby for WCC's Highways Depot has been approved. And thank you very much indeed. Right. Um, now then, we need to exclude the public from the meeting for the uh, exempt items under paragraph 2, Schedule 12A of the Local Government Act 1972 as amended. Okay, if you could do that. Yeah. yeah. I think everyone who should go has gone, but I will just double check one more time. Thank you. Yeah, that's fine. I'm also going to stop recording now, so just bear with me while that happens. Right. Uh, you should all see something that says recording stopped. Yeah, perfect. Done. Thank you. OK, that's it. Thank you. Ian, would you like to um, comment on the exempt minutes?